So it's a pleasure to be here this morning. I'm only surprised that Dr. Kwan didn't say that the best thing about coming to Cleveland is his boss. So um, I'm going to talk to you about minimally invasive pancreatic surgery, laparoscopic or robotic. So fortunately, I do open laparoscopic and robotic surgery, so hopefully I can give you a perspective on this. Um, I have no disclosures. Uh, you know, minimally invasive pancreatic surgery is one of the great forefronts, I think. Um, it's been, as in, you saw on liver, it's been relatively slow for acceptance either way, um, partly because of the complexity, and we have this limitation of not always having great pancreatic surgeons as well as laparoscopic surgeons. I think that's somewhat true in liver as well. There are multiple technical things that you may be able to do, including hand assist, hybrid techniques, uh, which we're actually a pretty big fan of. And I would say there's a lot of discussion around this topic. Um, I just participated in an international consensus conference, which I'm going to show you some results of, because they specifically dealt with this very question. In general, the high quality data is lacking in all of these, because I'm going to try and give you a, I'm not going to teach you about laparoscopic or robotic pancreatic surgery. And one of the things that comes up quite frequently is cost. So what are some of the challenges? You know, pancreatic surgery in general is concentrated in many centers, and so the traditional operations of open surgery aren't particularly common. Um, but you do have to be a good open pancreatic surgeon, I would say, as to do minimally invasive. Uh, there are a lot of technical considerations and t uh, toys and gadgets, which we do like. Uh, and we've talked about this problem of having both uh, proficiency in multiple uh, approaches. And I think this is particularly true in mentoring, and I'm going to talk about this towards the end. And as we know, we in pancreatic surgery concentrate a lot on mortality. We have improved mortality substantially in pancreatic surgery. We haven't really changed the ball at all on morbidity. And that obviously can lead to mortality. So defining success, I think we have to decide if we're going to answer this question, what really constitutes success? Is it just about technical feasibility of one approach over the other? If you're able to do something minimally invasively, does that automatically mean that it's superior? And where does cost really play in this equation, especially as we're starting out? Are we ever really going to have good randomized trials on this topic? And if you had put Lapcoli to a randomized trial and said the outcome measure is bile duct injury, would we have ever accepted it? Um, and who gets to be the judge? As we talk about West versus East, some uh, countries' politics and their adoption of technology is different, so who gets to decide that? In terms of robotic versus laparoscopic, specifically looking at, I think, some of the advantage of uh, robotics, um, it's, it's uh, ergonomically easier for the surgeon, reduces tremors, there's no fulcrum effect. The three dimension and HD capabilities and autofocus in, in the newest um, robots are great, at, at least the Da Vinci ones as we, what we currently have. The degrees of freedom really um, helps in terms of replicating the open surgery. The potential advantages of laparoscopy, I think the equipment is much more accessible um, and available. I think especially the field of view in laparoscopy is a little bit better than a cone view of uh, robotics. And I think if you work well with the team, you certainly develop a fluidity of motion, I call it, that I think really uh, lends itself to laparoscopy. But what's the data so far? So this is NISQIP data, and I just have the box around the pancreatic uh, resection portions. So if you look at distal pancreatectomy, it is the most accepted in terms of minimally invasive, but that's relatively half of the procedures. And you can see in of that group, laparoscopy predominates uh, versus uh, robotic. In terms of Whipple procedures, you can see that maybe that's the original question is should we be doing this at all, not whether it's laparoscopic or robotic. But in the few cases that are being done, most of them are being done laparoscopically, not robotically. And if you look, this is now National Cancer Database data from the United States. You can just see that the majority of hospitals don't do any. Uh, minimally invasive, laparoscopic, 
And if they are doing them at all, they do less than 10, so low volume. We would be one of the few places that do more than 10 a year. So we're considered a high volume center. So let's talk about some data. I wanted to try and as much as possible talk about data. So this is the LEOPARD 2 trial, which was just published uh, two months ago in Lancet. So this is a way to look with a randomized trial at minimally invasive Whipple procedure. This is just Whipple procedure. And the point here is that they really tried to do a robust training technique to really get everybody to know how to do it. These are high volume centers. The surgeons had to do more than 20 uh, MIS Whipples a year. And you could do laparoscopic or robotic. Almost all of them were laparoscopic. Um, and the outcome, as in the Leopard 1 trial, was uh, functional recovery, and they powered that to that number of patients. So what happened? In terms of functional recovery, you can see they're virtually identical. If anything, return to function is actually a little bit better and open, surprisingly. Remember, these, all these abdomens were totally covered, so the patient didn't know which they had. Um, so functional recovery, that's their primary outcome, was identical. I put in here the actual data that is published in the paper, and if you look at some of the outcomes, the, the predominant one that stands out, not surprisingly, is that laparoscopic surgery was uh, quite significantly longer. I would also note that the pancreatic parenchyma was softer, even though the duct size was the same in the laparoscopic group. What else happened? The fistula rate was uh, virtually identical. Um, I did think it was interesting, and one of the reasons we believe in MIS and do it in heavier patients is that the wound infection rate is less. The mortality from the procedure, from the complications of the procedure, were higher in the laparoscopic group. So what, did, what happened? Actually, the interim analysis halted the trial because of the mortalities in the MIS group. So this is a, a bit frustrating. The, the Dutch, we'll call them the Western group, um, uh, really, I think, does, as we know, many excellent randomized trials, and this was not encouraging. So what about robotic in terms of Whipple? We're going to hear more about Whipple in a minute, so I'm going to try and limit this. But it's even less, as I showed you in the United States, um, the less proliferation. Um, that you have to obviously have the technology. I think the nice thing, obviously, is you can precisely adopt open techniques to MIS. And this also was the subject of several, two major consensus conferences. I'm going to show you the Pittsburgh data. I think this is the provocative uh, bar that we should be aiming for, in my opinion. So if you look at the fistula rate, it's in clinically relevant fistulas, Bs and Cs, it's very acceptable, very low 30 and 90 day mortality, and it does equate with a significant improvement in length of stay. But I would just point out the, the operative time, which is important, but in the, learn, the sense of the learning curve is long in this operation. You have to be committed to it. So what about distal pancreatectomy? Because I think most people, this is where they should be talking. We shouldn't be talking, especially with this question about Whipple. So I think, especially with the Leopard 1 trial, any MIS is uh, superior to open. I always tell people you don't want to compromise your oncologic outcomes for the sake of a technique, which is important. In terms of specifically lap versus robotic distal pancreatectomy, no randomized data. Um, cost is a component. You have to have the robot, obviously. In terms of surgical skills, I think for some people, highly skilled laparoscopic surgeons like laparoscopy and lap distal better. I think if you're getting started as a pancreatic surgeon, sometimes robotics is a little bit easier in terms of the pace of the operation and being able to control, control it and do it a little more precisely if you're not good at it. For distal, actually the big question, there aren't a lot of differences is what I'm going to tell you, and perhaps the one that is of importance is um, spleen preservation. So I just want to talk for a minute about the consensus, the International Consensus Conference in Minimally Invasive Pancreatic Resection that just happened and I was able to participate in. 
in Miami two weeks ago. I would say this was a very robust international east-west participating um, uh, session with high degree of methodology in trying to develop questions, use uh, data extraction in a systematic approach, and come to consensus. And I wanted to put up for you just one of the questions that we dealt with. So this is, I'm just showing you how it happened. So this was question number six, and it was specifically looking at this topic, laparoscopic versus uh, robotic. And it was able to be, the good thing is a lot of the data was able to be summarized and you could break down the data. This is sort of the way it was presented to us in the working groups where they would summarize the data very robustly, give us a sense of the quality uh, for all the, any of the literature that was involved. And I think this was very helpful. This, so these were two that I just pulled out of the, the session that we used. Um, and this is one that was referenced. This is from the Asian Journal, so this is a multivariate analysis. And if you look, this is just distal now, lap, trying to answer this question. In general, looking at the data, the operative time is longer by 37 minutes. The length of stay, interestingly, in the robotics is less by a day. But if you look at this outcome of splenic preservation, it's, uh, the odds ratio is 2.6 in terms of likelihood, fistula rate and over, overall complications are no different. So if you look at some forest plots, if you look at either uh, robotic or laparoscopic, so this um, operative time is always longer in robotic, interestingly, fairly similar to open distal pancreatectomy. Splenic preservation or fistula rates are the same across the entire spectrum and uh, spleen preservation is better in the robotic group, especially if you're trying to preserve the vessels, which is what I would always do. So this is part of our challenge. If you look at probably the, the way we're gonna cross this curve that Dr. Kwan showed you is training through fellowships. So these are all the fellowships in the United States. And just pointing out, this is the distal pancreatectomy group. This is the Whipple group. And you can see, even in the people we're trying to train for the future, we're not doing a great job, especially on the MIS part of, of Whipple procedures. But I would say probably distal is the way we're gonna start to overcome this. But you can see it's quite a varied experience of the current fellows that we're training. I like to point out that this is gonna take a team. It's not just one surgeon thinking that they're gonna be able to start a MIS pancreatic program. I think you should consider two staff surgeons that are committed to it, that they're both invested. They both have to be HPB trained and laparoscopists, in my opinion. I think it helps if the entire program or department is committed to this so that the best patients are coming because patient selection is important. And it's a real, it's a whole team. You have to have the nurses on board as, as well. So how did we answer this question then as part of the international consensus group? And this is how we answered, should laparoscopic or left pancreatectomy versus robotic, is there a big difference? And it was felt the consensus, this is a statement that's gonna be published, not earth shattering certainly that laparoscopic and robotic assisted distal pancreatectomy are safe and feasible options and that can both be considered depending on your experience and local resources. So I think in summary, LAP-PD, which we're gonna hear more about in a minute, is right now is struggling a bit as a technical advance. Patient selection in that I think is very important as well as the team approach. I think in terms of distal pancreatectomy, robotic or laparoscopic are acceptable. And part of our issue is training. So I wanna thank you from Cleveland.